Hello, I'm Crafty Patty. Today's video on dyeing macrame cotton cord or cotton rope. So have you ever wondered, you're thinking, I'd really like to have some color in my macrame cord because generally speaking, it usually comes in a tan on bleach cotton color. And I have used yarn in some of my macrame videos and people have commented, I love that color, but I can't find it anywhere. I really want it. Well, dye it. Then you can have any color you want. So today's video, I'll be concentrating a little bit more on the rope because I'm just in the rope bowl lately. And I had a project in mind to do an Easter basket. So I've chosen pastel colors, but any color will work. So this video, I'm going to be showing you how to use one, two, three colors on the same skein of rope, and then how to blend to get two more colors, five colors in total. So keep watching and let's go have some fun. So here's some supplies that you'll be needing to do dyeing for rope or your macrame cord. I have four bins here depending on how many colors you want to use. You'll need tongs because we're going to lifting up very hot rope or cord. Paper towel is used to dip into the dye back to see if you're happy with the color. Obviously, you're going to need some gloves so you don't dye your hands. Measure cup to measure out water. And you're going to need a candy thermometer or a food thermometer, whatever. And this is used because you want your water to be 140 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about, I think that's 60 degrees Celsius. Don't quote me, you can look that up. And um, if your tap water isn't quite up to temperature, then you're going to have to heat it on the stove and I find if I just put it on a simmer it's the perfect temperature. Just one little piece of string you'll need um, because what I'm going to do is once I've unwound my rope I put a little piece of string on it just to contain my skein so it stays in one round circle. And that's what the scissors are for. And I'm using rip dye. I'm using fuchsia aquamarine and lemon yellow. I chose these colors because they're very similar to what you would have for your three primaries so we can make more colors. I'm using the pink because I'm doing an Easter project so I want nice Easter colors. Normally you'd have red, blue and yellow for your primaries. And of course these colors together will make more colors. So I'm going to be putting these two together to get my purple and these two to get my green. So I'll have five colors in total from all of my rope. And you'll be needing some salt. I'll be using about half a cup per three gallons of water. So let's show you how I prepare the rope to get ready for dyeing. So for the rip dye, the instructions are that one bottle of rip dye will dye two pounds of rope material, whatever you're dyeing. So, that's where a kitchen scale comes in handy. Let's say I wanted to dye this, this skein of macrame cotton. It doesn't actually tell me, sorry, how many yards are in here. Oh, wait a minute. There's 200 meters, 218 yards in this one. So this weighs approximately one pound. So I know that I'll only need half of this container and I'll be putting that in three gallons of water which is uh, 12 liters of water. But today I'm doing a rope project. I'm going to be using the same rope I've used in my other videos for rope bowls and it is cotton and that's what you want to use. You need to use cotton for using just your basic writ dye. Now just one pre-warning, I bought this cotton sash cord locally because that's what I could find. But there is cording online 
that you can buy that does not have a synthetic core. I'll leave some links in the description box below so you can find it for yourself. Or just look for one with no synthetic cord. The reason being is if you're going to dye it, then the synthetic part will not dye. So you will have little parts of, looks like white or silver, popping out of your cord and it won't dye because it's synthetic because I used an all-purpose dye. So if that bothers you, then make sure you buy one without a synthetic core. This rope works great for making just ordinary rope baskets, but when you're dyeing it, it won't dye the synthetic part. So this particular one is one quarter inch by 100 feet. So if I was to put two of these on here, I'm up to about one pound, 10 ounces. So I know that I've got approximately a pound and a half just to rough it out. But what I'm going to be doing is when I'm lying my rope into my bins, I'm only going to be putting in the ends because I'm going to have multiple colors on my rope. So I think I will be fine by using three gallons of water and only half of my bottle of Ritt. If you have the rope like this in a skein, it does tend to tangle when you're working with it. So what I'm going to do is just unravel this and I'll be rolling it into a ball. The way I'm going to be dyeing this rope is I'm going to be dipping one end into one color and the other end into another color and the middle into another color. And then I'll be blending my two colors in the middle here. So I've wound my rope into a nice long circle. So I just grabbed my two kitchen bar stools. So now I'm just going to take one end and just to secure it so it stays in place. And I'm going to continue to just wrap around. And of course you can do this with whatever chairs you have at home. It's just somewhere so I can do the wrapping. All right, so when you get to the end, you can just undo your knot. And just tie your two ends together. So I just want to have one end secure, so I'm just going to tie this around a little piece of string, not too tight because you want that to be able to be open enough to get the dye to penetrate on all those pieces there. It's just enough that it holds it all together when you're dying. Because my tap water was not 140 degrees Fahrenheit, I have put water in some of my canning containers. I'm not going to be dyeing in here. I just prefer not to put dye in things I'm going to be using food for. I'll be using my plastic bins for that. But this is just to get my water up to temperature. And I've got my candy thermometer waiting to see when it gets up to 60 or my 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Because I don't want any splashing of dye anywhere in my kitchen, I've just put on a piece of a dollar store a tablecloth just so it doesn't get uh, dye sprayed onto my moldings or my kitchen. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to pre-wash our rope in the sink. So I've just added some warm water to my sink here. I'm gonna add just a a drop of dish soap and I'm just using two sinks because I just thought it was easier so this didn't tangle as much with two skeins. I'm just going to hold on to this part here so I know that's my end. So I'll leave it there just for now. I'm going to get this batch in. All right so you just want to wash anything in dyeing Again, it's, you know, if you're dyeing cotton, there shouldn't be anything on this, but just in case there's any sizing 
or anything that will prevent the dye penetration, you really want to make sure it's clean and ready to go. So our rope is nice and clean. Just take that out of our water. Pop that in an extra bin here. And now we're going to empty the water out of the sink because we don't need this anymore. And we're going to get our dye baths ready. I pre-measured my bins to know that uh, three gallons of water comes up to about two inches down from this marking here. So I know approximately how much water to put in here. So I've just taken my hot water from the stove and I'll fill up my bins. So I'm going to put my yellow in here and I'm only using half of this container. And we're adding half a cup of salt. Got one cup in here so I can use it for both. And let's give that a good stir. And in this one, I'm adding my fuchsia. Again, I'm only using about half of the bottle here. And the other half a cup of salt. So salt doesn't actually set the dye. What it's doing, it just makes the dye migrate out of the water and into the rope. Now we're also going to be adding a teaspoon of dish soap as well. And what the soap does, it just helps promote level dyeing. So I'll just estimate a teaspoon here. And let's stir that in. So here's my first rope. I'm going to put the bottom into this one. I'm just going to use my tap here to hold it up and I'm going to put the other end into my fuchsia. It'll be okay like that. I'll just lift that up a bit like so. I think we'll be okay. There we go. And the same with this one. I'm going to do two batches. There's my one end. And I'm going to lift it around. I wish I can go around here. And drop the yellow the other end into the yellow. I think actually I'm going to go this way. Let's try that. So I've just secured that to my covered handles because I don't want this to drop into the dye because I want this part to be blue. So continue to Stir this if you can for about 10 minutes. Let's see, can we get both hands going at the same time? <laughs> uh. And I'm going to set the timer for 10 minutes and see what we get after 10 minutes of saturation. We can also do our paper towel test. Let's dip the paper towel into the fuchsia. And that's what it's looking like. Again, remember that when it dries, it will be lighter than that. And for the yellow, and there's our yellow, paler yellow. 
So I'll probably end up leaving this a bit longer than I will the fuchsia. So 10 minutes is up and this is what we've got. Here's our pink for our fuchsia, a nice saturation. And here's our yellow. Again, it's got a really nice saturation as well. So I probably won't leave it much longer. So while I'm waiting these to saturate maybe a little bit more, I'm gonna make my third dye bath, which is going to be the aquamarine blue. I've got my water on the stove still on a simmer so it's at the right temperature. So I'll just pour the water in. I'm going to again use only half of the bottle of Rit dye. And again, a half cup of salt. Give that a mix. And again, one teaspoon of my Dawn dish soap. I also wanted to mention about um, doing ombre dyeing. So let's say you wanted to make all this pink, but in graduated shades of pink, which is what ombre is. It's a graduated from dark to a little bit medium and then right up to lighter. So you would take all of this rope, put it all in the dye bath, and then every few minutes you would lift it up, let that soak, lift it up, let it soak, lift it up, let it soak, and keep doing that until you've got your graduation. And as you can even see here, on this little bit here, just from the rope being wet, it has bled into this rope here that wasn't even actually sitting in here. So we've got dark and going to a lighter shade. So that's what you'll get if you do an ombre. So I'm just doing a test on my paper towel for the aquamarine and I've got hardly any color there whatsoever. So for this aquamarine, I'm going to add more dye because it's not the shade I want. Let's try it again. So getting a little bit more color there. It's still very light, so you know what? For this blue, I'm going to add the whole bottle. So I'm just going to cut my strings off that I had supported my rope with. And I'm going to exchange the yellow dye bath for the blue. So I'm just going to pull these out and let them drop into the sink. Take my yellow one out very carefully. Then I'm going to bring my blue into the sink. I'm going to take my yellow and I'm going to pop it into the bin here. this yellow and pop it into the bin as well. And then I'm going to drop my blue, drop my rope into my blue, the middle part of the rope into the blue. And 
I'm going to have the blue so it goes a little bit into the pink and that will make my purple. Same with over here. I'm going to drop that in a bit more. I've got, still got some pink here. And the yellow, now that I've got this up here, I think it's going to be okay if I just drop this in a little bit more. I want to make sure all the rope is covered, so I'm just going to lay it down here. Make sure that doesn't go anywhere. I'm just going to hold on to that. And we've got a few yellows here. I'm just going to make sure that those are in the dye bath as well. So I'm just going to hold on to that. Drop this one in just a bit more as well. And let's give that a little swish around. Oh, isn't this fun? I'm having fun. Hope you are. <laughs> And already, can you see how now I've got the green in the middle? I've got yellow, green, and blue. And on this side, we've got blue on the end. Now I'll get a better one. Let's try this one so you can see better. There. So we've got the blue on the end. purple in the middle, and then pink. Oh, I'm so happy this is turning out just the way I wanted it. This is going to be so cool. Oh, yeah. And to get a little bit more graduation here, I've just slightly dipped my yellow into the blue and pulled it right out. And now I've got this beautiful graduation from yellow to very light green to darker green and into my blue. Very quick dip. And I'm going to do the same thing on this side for my pink. I'm going to just do a little dip into the blue. And I've got lots of saturation on my pink, so I'm just going to take my pink dye bath out as well. So 10 minutes is just about up. So I might leave that blue just a little tiny bit more, but it's looking pretty nice. But remember that this will lighten up when it's dry. There's our 10 minutes. So I'm going to leave that for another maybe 5 more minutes or 10 more minutes. Alright, so we're all done with our saturation of our last blue color there. Take this out of the sink. Now I'm just going to rinse this out in cool water. I'm just going to let that one sit. I'm going to do the same with my other bath chair. Rinse in cold water and then wash. And I'll just let it sit in the warm, soapy water for a little bit to clean it. So this has been soaking in the hot, soapy water, warm, soapy water. I'll just rinse that off again with cold water. And then we'll be ready for hanging outside to dry.
And now I've got it outside hanging on my clothesline. Look at all those gorgeous colors. Wow. Well, I just couldn't waste all this dye. Remember the macrame cord I put on the waist scale just to show you as an example? Well, I've popped it into the dye bass. I've put three different sections. I've put one in the fuchsia. Actually, I put two in the fuchsia. I put one in the aquamarine. Left them in there for about 10 minutes. I've just taken one of the little pinks out and I've put it in, squeezed out the excess and then put it in with the aquamarine to make purple. So let's see how we do. So I wasn't sure how this dye would react at a lower temperature because it wasn't at 140 degrees anymore by any means, but it still did a beautiful job. So I actually only left them in for about 20 minutes and this was the fuchsia and the aquamarine. And then I put one of the fuchsias in with the aquamarine to get my purple. So there you go. I will let these dry on the line as well and we'll see what they look like when they're dry. Well, here's the robe all dry and isn't it looking like Easter? It's exactly what I wanted and that's why I chose these three colors and kept it to a pastel and only dyed it for about 10-15 minutes approximately. If you wanted a more intense color, then you could leave it in for up to an hour. So I'm hoping that I will be able to show you what I'm going to do with this. I've injured my arm. Maybe tendonitis. We're doing it. So I don't know, I'm going to really try and make a project with this right after this video. If you don't see it, it's because I just can't do it. Sorry. Anyways, I hope I've inspired you to dye some rope and make some fun projects with it. Thanks for watching. Give me a thumbs up if you liked the video. Until next time, bye bye.